Hello again and welcome back. Here's another exercise looking at discrete probability distributions. Uh, this time we're looking at uh, what might be a small town dilemma uh, considering replacing our stop signs with street lights uh, at uh, one of our intersections. So we first want to determine how many cars are using the intersection on a daily basis. So the following table contains information on the number of cars using the intersection over a 30 day period. So, first thing that we need to do, uh, use this information to, to develop a uh, probability distribution so that we can answer these questions. Okay, so what does our data mean? Uh, out of those 30 days, so these should add up to 30 days, out of those 30 days, uh, five of those days we saw only one car use the intersection. Six of those days we saw two cars. Nine days we saw three cars, etc. So using this information, we want to calculate the relative frequencies. So this is something we've we've come into this concept of relative frequencies in, in much earlier videos, and this is starting to bring it all together uh, to to derive these uh, discrete probability distributions. What this means is basically that we're assuming that this sample is representative of the entire population. So to calculate those relative frequencies, oh, that's a nice, calculate these, f of x, I simply need to calculate the probability 5 divided by 30 to give me my relative frequency uh, for one car. So 5 divided by 30, let's round that to 0.16, uh, 0.17. So this means that on a randomly selected day, there is a probability of 0.17 that only one car uh, is going to use that intersection. Similarly, if we go through the next one, 6 divided by 30, so 0.2. So there's a 0.2% or sorry, a 0.2 probability or a 20% chance that on a randomly selected day, uh, only two cars are, are going to use that intersection. So let's carry on. 9 divided by 30, this is 0.3. Uh, 6 divided by 30.2 again and finally 4 uh, 0.13 okay so there we have all our frequencies uh, does it satisfy part A does it satisfy the conditions for a discrete probability distribution well those characteristics or those conditions aren't too stringent. One is that they are all uh, non-negative values. So all of our frequencies are greater than or equal to zero. Looking at those, yes, I see they're all greater than or equal to zero. No problems there. Uh, the next, do they add up? Oops, do they add up to one? In other words, on a randomly selected day, uh, is there a car going through the intersection? I don't have the zero as an option here. Uh, there's always uh, something happening at this intersection. Uh, so our probability, if we were to add all of these up, uh, I have, looks like they add to one. We can go through and calculate this. Starting at the bottom, plus 0.2, plus 0.3, plus 0.2, plus 0.17. And okay, there's some rounding error in there, but yes, we can see uh, that it all adds up to one. So let's say, yes, we do meet those, those criteria. Now, let's, um, while we have the information, we've, we've uh, looked at histograms before for discrete probability distributions, although I don't think we called them at the time discrete probability distributions. Um, but here we can actually look at the graphical, um, the graphical way of, of explaining these types of distributions. This is using the histogram. So what I can do here is take, here's, here's my discrete variable x, the number of cars. So this is what goes along our x-axis. One car, two car, three car, four, five. And on the y-axis are those frequencies, or in this case, these probabilities. So 
we're not going to do this perfectly accurately, but let's let's just graph these. Uh, so the the frequency, the relative frequency, or the probability of seeing only one car uh, on this intersection that was found to be 0.17. So he'll just draw that line. We'll label it 0.17. Probability of seeing two cars 0.20. So a little bit more than 0.17. Uh, three cars. Now we're up to 30. So let's come up here. 0.3. Four cars. Now we're back down to 0.20. So this one is uh, about exactly the same. 0 0.2. And five cars. Now we're down to 0.13. So that's a little bit less. Oops. So here we have now the histogram, the graphical representation uh, of these relative frequencies. Now again, we've seen these before when we looked at the categorical variables uh, some time ago in, in much earlier videos. Uh, so it shouldn't look too alien, but here we are now, we're starting to bring some of these concepts together uh, in terms of these discrete probability distributions. So let's go ahead and, and look at the next part of these problems. Part B, what is the probability that on any given day, three cars or less will use the intersection? So in fact, using the graphical display, I can see, well, that probability, three cars or less, that's going to be the sum of all of these probabilities. Or similarly, looking at the tabular form, we've got those probabilities here as well. So it's going to be the sum of what's the probability if we see one car plus the probability of seeing two cars plus the probability that we see three cars. So this is 0.17 plus 0.2 plus 0.3. So that's 0.67. So there's a probability of 0.67 or a 67% chance that on any given day we see three cars or less uh, using this intersection. Uh, okay, let's go on to part B, uh, part C, sorry. Part C, what is the probability that on any given day three cars or more uh, use the intersection? So now we're just gonna look at these probabilities or similarly in our table over here, we're looking at these probabilities. Uh, I'm running out of room, let's come down here for part C. So this is the frequency that we see, three cars plus four cars plus five cars. And we don't see six or seven or eight, so we just have to add up to uh, just the fifth. And so here we're gonna add up together 0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.13. And here, this is 50.63. So there's a 63% chance on any given day we see three cars or more. Moving on to part D. What is the probability that on any given day we see two or three cars? So now here we're just looking at two or three cars. Two or three cars. So part D, this is the probability of seeing two cars. Oh, my pen's doing weird things. Probability of seeing three cars. So this is 0.2 plus 0.3. So this is a 0.5. So there's a 50% chance that we'll see two or three cars. Good. So hopefully that was relatively straightforward. We need to just calculate these relative frequencies. Uh, we can we can demonstrate those either in a tabular format or in the graphical format using this histogram approach. And then in order to answer these problems, it's just a matter of adding together the appropriate uh, probabilities to get the one that that uh, is of interest. So I hope that this has helped. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.